Hi guys, I am Dr. Heather Yost. I am a board certified functional medicine practitioner. I am the founder of Yost Wellness Centers, where we are very passionate about helping people achieve optimal health and well-being, and I believe in empowered education. So I'm gonna spend the next 10 to 15 minutes talking to you about hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, what the difference is, where it comes from, why it happens, what the signs and symptoms are, and most importantly, what you could do about it. But first, before we begin, if you want access to our free thyroid webinar, which is packed with even more information, please comment below or follow us now. I wanna talk about the basics between like hypothyroid and hyperthyroid. Hypothyroid is a lot more common. So if you hear people talking about thyroid issues, usually they are talking about hypothyroid. But the basics are is that hypothyroid means that your thyroid is pushing out less thyroid hormone. Now what happens in your body is your brain communicates with all of the organ systems and there's what's called like a feedback loop to that. So when your thyroid hypo functions, the brain hormone called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone will go up. So I know that gets confusing for people. They're like, if I'm hypo, that means low, but yet my lab ranges are high. And that's because TSH, and I think of it, your brain is kind of like the manager of your system. And if somebody's not doing their job, the manager might have to speak a little bit louder. So that hormone, if you think about it, thyroid stimulating hormone goes up in response to a hypothyroid situation. Now, most of the time, that is the only marker that is checked. And if you think about it, TSH is what comes from the brain. I mean, most of the time, standard conventional testing isn't even looking at what's coming from the thyroid itself. Now, hyperthyroid, on the other hand, is when the thyroid gland produces too much hormone, and that can cause, so hypothyroid can cause everything to kind of slow down. Hyperthyroid really causes things to speed up. So your metabolism can speed up, your heart rate can speed up, you can have a heat intolerance, and kind of the pathophysiology or the causes of these two things can be similar in where they're coming from, but obviously different because it's producing different effects. So the thyroid is really the master of metabolism and energy levels. It's a part of healing and repair for every cell in your body. It has an impact on all of the other hormones. And thyroid dysfunction can happen due to a variety of reasons, but the most common really is autoimmunity. So autoimmunity is really an immune system issue, and the immune system causes malfunction of the thyroid. So that immune system issue for hypothyroid could be Hashimoto's. The immune system issue for hyperthyroid could be something like Graves. And you can test for these things. I mean, you don't have to guess where it's coming from. If 85% of people with hypothyroid is coming from Hashimoto's, we'd probably want to know that. Or could it be that it's an iodine deficiency? Or could it be that it's something else or caused maybe by medications? Or that you're at a higher risk for it because of genetic factors. So I want you to really think about if you have thyroid dysfunction, asking the question, where is this coming from? versus simply just treating those thyroid conditions. Because if you have hypothyroid and it's being caused by autoimmunity, there is no thyroid medication that's actually addressing that root cause. It's simply trying to override what the thyroid is doing so that the brain, TSH, calms down again. So when it comes to signs and symptoms, it's essential. I mean, I think early detection is really key. Early detection, early treatment, you know, just like a cavity, we'd say the same thing, that if you do have a problem in your mouth, you would hope the dentist is going to look at those small cavities and fix them there versus wait until they are really big issues. Because I see people with thyroid issues all the time and they have common symptoms like fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, depression, low libido, or swing the pendulum to the less common hyperthyroid is the things like I talked about. Weight loss with the metabolism speeding up, it can cause heart palpitations, sweating, anxiety. And we don't wanna just write these symptoms off and say, well, those are pretty common symptoms. Maybe you have children and that's why you're tired or maybe you're getting older and that's why you're gaining weight or maybe you've gone through some really stressful stuff and that's why you're depressed or, or you have anxiety. But what I want you to do with these symptoms is really start to ask, well, maybe it's common, but is that normal? And how, why would we guess if we can properly test, understand the real root cause 
of where these issues are coming from so that we can address it when it's small. When you look at actual ranges, medical ranges, they're really too broad, they're really too wide, they're not really zeroing in on optimal levels because I promise you if your TSH goes over two, you're most likely having some sort of hypothyroid symptoms. And medically, they allow those ranges to go all the way up to 4.5 or 5 until they're doing something. But again, what is the most common treatment for hypothyroid? The most common treatment isn't to dig deeper or to look where this is coming from or to ask more questions. It's to treat that thyroid disorder with medication. And please hear me when I'm saying it's not that I don't believe, I do believe there's a time and a place for medication. But if we are simply throwing medication on these symptoms and not really digging out where it's coming from or what the root cause is, those root causes are probably not gonna stay the same. They're definitely not gonna get better and they're probably gonna get worse just like a cavity would. When we look at functional markers, we really wanna look at the beginning of a problem. Then we can realize also, okay, are you in medical ranges that you do need a medication or is this an alarm situation where you have something like a thyroid storm? going on. So please don't dismiss these symptoms as common or normal. Please follow your intuition and get proper testing and ask to be tested for TSH, of course, also T4, T3, T3 uptake, how well you're absorbing that. You can also request antibodies to look at if you have something like Hashimoto's or Graves. So again, back to standard treatment for hypothyroid, it usually does involve a synthetic thyroid hormone replacement. Most common is actually levothyroxine or Synthroid. If you are in hyperthyroid, you could be prescribed a medication such as methamazole or other antithyroid medications. They can at times actually help to regulate some thyroid hormones or alleviate some symptoms, but let's look at it this way too. If most common response to hypothyroid is to give a synthetic T4, which is Synthroid levothyroxine, that T4 is in active in the body. It doesn't do anything as far as your metabolism, your energy. It's inactive. It's almost like the gas doesn't do anything for your engine until it gets into the engine. It can't just stay, stay at the gas station. So what happens with T4 is T4 actually has to be converted and T4 has to go to the gut, the liver, the kidneys, some peripheral tissue, and it has to be converted. Now, oftentimes we see patients that come in so so sick or so unhealthy that they're not even able to convert that thyroid hormone. So it's really important if you do understand what your T4 and your T3 levels are, then you could maybe get a combination or talk to your doctor about getting a combination medication for those, not just synthetic T4 and not just looking at the TSH to determine exactly what your thyroid and your brain's regulation of the thyroid are doing. Some frequently asked questions about thyroid disorders is, is obviously a lot of people talk to me about what can I do with diet and lifestyle on the flip, and there's a lot you can do. On the flip side, they're being told there's absolutely no benefit to changing your diet or changing your lifestyle, and that's just not true. I mean, we absolutely know with autoimmunity, again, 85% of people that are experiencing some sort of thyroid dysfunction, it's coming from an autoimmune disorder. And autoimmunity comes from the gut and the immune system. You know, that's not just for short-term disease and dysfunction, but it's for long-term health vitality as well. If your doctor doesn't know what to tell you about how to change your diet to go into more of a paleo or a Mediterranean style diet would be my best recommendation. Get rid of most, if not all, of those grains, please get rid of dairy. It's very highly processed and it's got a lot of chemicals in it and hormonal mimickers. Please lean into paleo or Mediterranean style diet. Again, if your doctor doesn't know about these things, it's not probably because they're trying to be dismissive or push you to the side. They've just literally never been trained in that. And your medical doctor, they are trained, I call them firefighters. They're trained for acute situations. That's what they do really, really well. And that's what they go to school for. So when it comes to chronic conditions, conventional medicine isn't really trained for chronic conditions or even trained in diet and lifestyle for really any healthcare condition out there unless they've done additional advanced training in those modalities. Just like I have training in medications, but that's not my area of expertise. My area of expertise is root cause, natural holistic healthcare, diet lifestyle changes, the impact of thyroid medications on the organ systems or any medications on the systems of the body 
and how do we prevent this from becoming, you know, at one moment you're treating this ill with this pill and now you have a side effect and you're treating another ill with another pill. So we really want to address the root cause and help you get clarity and guidance on what you can do to feel better because the truth is a lot of people are on thyroid medications. They're still feeling like crap. You know, they're asking anybody, practitioners, family members, everybody, what can I do for this? And they're getting answers like, well, your thyroid looks normal because they're basing that just off of a TSH. So we can dig a lot deeper. We can dig a lot wider. Now, in some rare cases, a thyroidectomy or surgical removal of the thyroid gland may be necessary to treat thyroid disorders. There is always a time and a place for medication, always a time and a place for surgical interventions, especially when it comes to things like thyroid cancer or severe hyperthyroidism that's not responsive to other treatments or even large goiters that can cause compression type symptoms or problems in the neck area. Now, if you do need a thyroidectomy or an ablation, please remember that's not, you're not like, okay, that's it, we're done. You're going to then still want to be saying to somebody, okay, what was the root cause of that? Where did this come from? How can I prevent this from becoming another issue with another organ system in my body? So in conclusion, understanding thyroid health is crucial to overall well-being. If you have any questions or concerns about thyroid function or you want personalized advice, please don't hesitate to reach out and remember to comment or follow us to access our free webinar packed with even more valuable insights and take charge of your thyroid health today.